Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode number 153 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, we are going to talk about a topic I have been super excited about for quite a long time. And the reason is that I've wanted to connect the dots between what's going on when we're exposed to steroids, whether they're topical, oral, or they're inhaled, and our adrenal glands. A lot of people don't know until they've heard maybe two or three times on the Healthy Skin Show that topical steroid cream that you're actually using, the hydrocortisone, that is actually cortisol. It is pharmaceutical cortisol that your body absorbs, and it does have an impact beyond your skin. It's my hope that after listening to today's episode, you will have a much deeper understanding of how these exposures to steroids, and yes, by the way, anything bought over the counter still counts. I know a lot of people seem to think there's a distinction between what your doctor writes a prescription for and what you can just go into the pharmacy and buy on your own. They are all steroids. They all have the same impact, unfortunately, though some, those stronger ones prescribed, have a stronger impact because obviously they're more highly concentrated, but it should not ever negate the impact of what you can get from the stuff you can buy over the counter. And this is especially problematic for people who then end up in a state where their body becomes addicted to those steroids. And we talked about this on a few episodes of the Healthy Skin Show in regards to topical steroid withdrawal. And so while we tend to think about topical steroids being the main driver of that issue, in actuality, it's steroid exposure from any route that can trigger the problem. So I am really excited to share this episode with you. So let's dive in. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I have a guest with me who has been on both the Healthy Skin Show before as well as the Eczema and Psoriasis Awareness Week. Her name is Dr. Carrie Jones. You guys might recognize her because she is connected to something called the Dutch test. And we are going to talk about that today because the topic we're discussing, I think the Dutch test could be incredibly helpful for people that are having trouble finding answers in other avenues, especially when it comes to exposure to all of these different steroids Uh, inhalers, all sorts of things around steroid use. So Dr. Carrie Jones is an internationally recognized speaker, consultant, and educator on the topics of women's health and hormones. She graduated the National University of Natural Medicine School of Naturopathic Medicine in Portland, Oregon, where she completed her two-year residency in women's health, hormones, and endocrinology. Later, she graduated from Grand Canyon University's Master's of Public Health program, with a goal of doing more international education. She was adjunct faculty for many years teaching gynecology and advanced endocrinology, fertility, and has been the medical director for two large integrative clinics in Portland. She is currently the medical director for Precision Analytics, and they are the creators of the Dutch Hormone Test. Dr. Jones, thank you so much for being back on the show. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm glad that we had that conversation in New York, and here we are. I know. We were like nerding out all about (laughs) cortisone, cortisol, Mm -hmm. topical steroids, all this stuff. Because I started to think about people who have had long-term exposure to these things. And my audience, many of them have, right? Because we don't unfortunately get the best guidance all the time. Sorry, docs, but it's true a lot of times dermatologists don't give the best warnings to their patients right now because there's no doesn't seem to be a standard about how to appropriately use topical steroid creams. And some folks also have asthmatic issues, so they're using inhalers and other medications to help deal with their allergies that also contain steroids. Mm-hmm. And so what happens is people end up with this situation of like, steroid withdrawal. So when it comes to the skin, it's called topical steroid withdrawal. You guys know that I've talked to other people about that. But 
as I was talking to Dr. Jones, I was asking her, I'm like, could the Dutch test help us better understand what's happening? And she's like, yeah, sent me this amazing study, which we'll touch on today, because I think you guys are going to find this fascinating. But first, I want to ask you a question so that we can kind of clear up some misinformation about what these different medications kind of are in reality. So Mm -hmm. we've got hydrocortisone. (laughs) We've got cortisone cream. (laughs) What are those? It's so frustrating because... um... So the body makes cortisol, right? Cortisol is our big stress hormone and it's incredibly anti-inflammatory. So what the pharmaceutical industry did is they created hydrocortisone cream. Hydrocortisone is really hydrolyzed cortisol. So hydrocortisone Mm. is really cortisol in in a tube. (laughs) That's what it is because cortisol is anti-inflammatory and it's a naming thing by the pharmaceutical industry. So it's really confusing when you read the ingredient label, when you flip your little, you know, your little tube over of hydrocortisone and it says hydrocortisone 10 or three or five or whatever it is, it's actually cortisol that you're putting on your body. And this is cortisol that is normally made by your adrenal glands. Normally made by your adrenal glands. And then there's the steroid, (laughs) Like you take prednisone, but you can put that in a cream as well. (laughs) And so the steroid is different than cortisol and has a suppressive effect on the adrenals, on the HP, the brain down to the adrenal axis. So you can actually give yourself cortisol or you can suppress yourself cortisol, depending on which cream you have. And for people just to be very clear on this, if you are applying topical steroids, okay, so you're applying cortisol to yourself. Could that cause problems with your brain signaling (laughs) and communicating to the adrenals? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. For sure. It can, if you're taking the steroid form, um, just like you would have a steroid nasal spray or a steroid inhaler, steroid pill like prednisone, if you're taking a steroid form of the cream, for your eczema, for psoriasis, for your rash, whatever it is, um, over time, what it does is it goes up to the brain and it suppresses the signal to make cortisol out of your adrenals. So now your own production of cortisol goes down because whatever steroid you're taking is causing a suppression at the brain level. What we call it, in the study I sent you, it's called adrenal insufficiency. So it's the inability to produce cortisol because the brain is like, oh, she's on steroids right now. Got it. Yep. Won't make cortisol and shuts it down. And it's not like you can just flip a switch and turn that back on, right? Not, not usually. I mean, it depends, <laughs> right? If you use, if you like use the cream one night, you know, it's probably, you know, nothing's probably going to happen in a night, but most people don't use it just for one night. Most people are using it pretty consistently for weeks, months. I've had, I've heard years, you know, pretty consistently, maybe not every day, but four or five times a week is really pretty consistent for their, their rash or their thing going on. And then as a result, they have all sorts of adrenal issues. Maybe now, maybe they're struggling with their cortisol production. They're tired. They're less motivated. They get more infections. They're struggling with autoimmune stuff because they've suppressed the cortisol production out of the body, maybe blood sugar issues, weight gain. I mean, there can be a lot of long-term things that come out of it depending on the person. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to share too. So the study we're talking about is called Adrenal Insufficiency in Corticosteroids Use, a Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis. And I will link to this in the show notes. That way people can actually see this particular study that we're talking about, one thing that really, there was a couple of things that jumped out at me. Um, So the one statement that really took me back was, quote, neither treatment dose and duration, nor administration form, nor random serum cortisol measurements seem to accurately predict the development of adrenal insufficiency after the use of corticosteroids, end quote. I was like, wow. There is literally no formula whatsoever to figure out who's going to end up with this and how long, which is probably one of the reasons why we're 
literally in the infancy of trying to get some sort of warning added yeah. to these products. It's, and it's, it's why, like, if I used steroid cream and you use steroid cream and, and maybe after four weeks, nothing happened to me, but after four weeks, you were like, man, not even realizing it. You're like, man, Carrie, I'm so tired. I think I might be getting sick. I don't know what's going on with me. I don't feel well. And I'm like, really? I'm not. I feel, I feel just fine. It's that quote just embodies that. Like you can't compare person to person. You can't compare. Well, it's just cream. It's just cream. It's it's not like I'm taking a steroid pill, you know, right? It's not like I got an injection. Yes, the pills, the injections, way stronger. The, the, the study shows that it's much, much stronger, much more likely to cause adrenal insufficiency. But you could also be in the small percent of people where the topical cream causes the insufficiency. And mm-hmm. you're, you may be thinking, well, I just apply it to my, you know, to my elbows at night. It's not like I'm taking prednisone, the pill, or it's not like I got a joint injection. It's like, you're right. You didn't, but it, to you, it didn't matter. Your brain was still like, Oh, too much. Mm-hmm. I don't like this. And shuts down, shuts and down shuts- the production for cortisol. Yeah. And, and, and I also wanted to point something out that you actually brought to my attention. So in this study, they discuss what a short term, what a short term <laughs> use of this is. Whereas just to preface this conversation, I had Dr. Peter Leo on the show, I'll link to that in the show notes, uh, where he discussed appropriate topical steroid use. And he said something to the effect like, well, basically five to seven days would be an appropriate time frame. And then you really need to be off the steroid cream for like two to three times the amount of time that you're on it. And then you can possibly go back on it. Like we have to be much more judicious and more contained. And yet this study is Mm -hmm. saying that a short term duration is 28 days or less consistent. Moderate duration is 28 days to a year. And then long term is considered greater than a year. And in the study, there were people that were using these these steroids, whether it was topical or inhaled or nasal or what have you, for greater than a year. I mean, they're part of the study. Mm. And the other thing to point out, too, is that this isn't just about topical application, right? So Mm -hmm. if you are using various products, it could be in capsule form, tablet form, Mm -hmm. uh, creams, you're inhaling because you've got stuffy nose, so Mm -hmm. it might be in your nasal spray or an inhaler. All of these different forms add up together, correct? And that's what the study says too. And multiple people often go multiple routes. So you have exercise-induced asthma, or maybe it's that time of year, it's spring. And so you're using your steroid inhaler more often, but because it's spring, you're also out in your garden and, um, you know, your, your, the histamine and the allergies is flaring up your eczema. And so now you're back on your topical cream, uh, because, but because again, it's allergies. So you've added back in your steroid nasal spray because your nose is drippy and you're congested. So now you have an inhaler and a nasal spray and a cream routinely, or maybe it's somebody like who has rheumatoid arthritis or something really significant. And they're doing prednisone every day to keep the rheumatoid, uh, rheumatoid arthritis and check with their, with their practitioner. And oh, by the way, they've also developed eczema or, you know, something. And so they're like, oh, I'm just going to, you know, the doctor's like, here, just use the steroid cream. It'll be fine. You know, we'll just, just put it on topically. You'll be okay. So they have this really potent oral and then they've added in topical or, you know, they've, they're on oral and like, oh, it's springtime. I'm going to go ahead and use my nasal spray. But the doctor's like, yeah, here, sure. Here's a steroid nasal spray to add on top of it. And it's, it's more common than we think because some of the stuff is over the counter and, and so we don't, you know, the nasal sprays and the, um, the, uh, are over the counter and the inhalers are pretty routine. And so we don't think of them as, we kind of think of them like, like ibuprofen or Tylenol, right? Mm-hmm. We're just like, meh, I'll just, I'll just pop, I'll just pop one. I'll just pop a few, you know, oh, I'm exercising. I'll just do my, inha- I'll hit my inhaler real quick. It's no big deal. And it may not be a big deal or it may be the biggest deal ever. And I'm, like, just like quote you read, we, they can't, it's not, we can't quite predict it, but we sure feel the symptoms. Yeah. And so how does that happen then in real life as far as hormones are concerned? So normally with a cortisol, the the healthy cortisol pattern, you have this elevation in the morning and then you mm-hmm. slowly drop down toward evening time. So what would happen to somebody who has this 
I guess they've suppressed things so much that now the body's really confused. What yes. What's going to happen? So they tend to have, um, just like you explained, no, the normal pattern looks like a mountain. So it comes up to a point like a mountain, and then you get this gradual slope. And instead, what can happen over time is they start to look like maybe a flat hill <laughs> or a low hill or maybe just a road. <laughs> like it's just a straight line. <laughs> <laughs> driving through Kansas. <laughs> right. Just driving through Kansas right now. Right. Exactly. And so you don't get that nice bump and you don't get the, the healthy response because cortisol gets a bad rap. But cortisol is really responsible for our blood sugar regulation. It's really helpful for our immune system. It's really anti-inflammatory. It's really important to help us switch us into alertness in the morning. It's really helpful to monitor um, and affect autoimmune disease. It's really important for memory and mood. And it, it's like Goldilocks. Like we don't want too much. We don't want too little. And then we have too little. All of those things I just listed off can be affected. And so you may be thinking oh, I'm just a little bit tired and not piecing together that your worsened autoimmune and your worsened mood and your worsened memory and your worsened inflammatory flare is all related to a degree to that flattened cortisol because you can't, you can't get the rise. You can't get the stimulation that you need because of the steroid. Yeah. And so with the Dutch test, because that's the one thing that I thought, I started to think about this. I'm like, how could we really visualize what the heck is going on? And I've had some clients who are in topical steroid withdrawal. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult a lot of times to support them because they they want to try all these things and a lot of things might work. Some things may work for some people, some may work for others, but overall, the overarching problem for many people is that they have this really messed up cortisol response mm -hmm. that can take sometimes years. And I don't even know if people fully recover. I'm not, I, we still don't fully understand this whole thing. Right. So, all right. So you have these different urine tests that you can do at home. Okay. So I think that's really great that they're very accessible. If someone was like, I really want to take a look at this. I know that I have topical steroid withdrawal or I have a lot of the symptoms of TSW. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of concerns. What would probably be the best thing for them to check? I know you've got the Dutch Complete. Yep. Um, we've got the Dutch Plus. Like, Is there any particular part of those panels that would be most beneficial to somebody that is dealing with this? Yeah, so absolutely. I If, with, if it was my patient, I would direct them towards the Dutch Plus. The Dutch Plus is a combination of urine. So it's really easy. Collect urine on piece on filter paper, let it dry throughout the day. And in combination, we do salivary cotton swab. So basically you pop a swab in your mouth, suck on it like a piece of candy, stick it back in the tube. And you're going to do that a couple times throughout the day as well. And the reason that I want both is out of the urine part, I want what's called metabolized cortisol. It gives me an idea if, if you're able to make cortisol in general. Metabolized cortisol is, it's a rough look of how much cortisol you make in the day. So can you make it? It answers that question. And then out of the saliva, out of the cotton swabs, I get what's called the cortisol awakening response. And we time it so that I can see how healthy of a mountain do you make in the morning? Do you go up and then down and then, it, and then through the rest of the day? So that tells me your pattern. And it tells me what's um, free and available. And it's the free hormone that can bind to receptors and do the things. We want, we, you want the free to be healthy because that's what makes you have energy and fight infection and deal with inflammation and all this stuff. So by putting the two together, I can now answer the question, can you even make it? it you know, is, is, are the, is, is the brain talking to the adrenals? And then how much of it is free and available? And then when the free and available you have, is it timed appropriately? Do you go up and then down? Do you just stay down? Are you down then up? Like what's what's happening here? And by knowing all that information, now I can be a lot more precise in, okay, we need to really support your brain. We need to really support your, your patterning and timing of supplements and timing of lifestyle interventions and timing of sleep and timing of light exposure and to really help dial it in for people and hopefully speed up the recovery. So this is not an adrenal reset problem. It's actually a brain it's reset problem. It's actually a brain problem. Unless 
randomly along the way, they've happened to develop Addison's disease. Addison's mm. disease is the true autoimmune. Your actual adrenal gland cannot make cortisol. All of your cortisol production otherwise is at the direction of your brain. It's your brain going now, make it now. Oop, don't make it now. Okay, now make it now. And so by starting, by seeing this patterning and seeing how much you can make gives us a decent indicator of what's happening at the brain level. Mm. And so and we can do things to help it, which is great. And so have you, um, have you guys noticed, um, so, so do you ask, and I, I just don't know, cause I haven't done a Dutch test myself in a couple of years, but on the form, cause there's a form, right. Mm-hmm. That everybody has to fill out. Is mm-hmm. it important if someone has had massive exposure to oral, inhaled, topical, et cetera, steroids, is that something important that you as the lab needs to know in order yes. to take that into account? Yeah. And we have a box. We actually have a box that they check and say, yeah. So if they're actively on it, check the box and then they write in what um, form and dose and when they when they last took it and how often they took it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's interesting. It's interesting because I find that it really fits that quote you read. I mean, we have people that say, I do a steroid inhaler two to three times a week um, and it doesn't affect their adrenals at all. The HPA axis looks great. Not an issue. Um, I still feel like you should probably get to the root cause of why you need the inhaler so much, but still not affecting you. And I have other people that are just dumbfounded. They're like, but I only use this topical. You know, I don't use this topical very often. And like, well, how long have you been using it? Oh, years, (laughs) years. Mm. But I only use it like once a week. I'm like, well, years once a week for you seem to have really affected it in part, obviously lots of things go into the brain adrenal communication, um, but steroids are a big player. They're, they're yeah. nothing can beat a steroid. And, and people will ask me, well, what vitamin can I take? What supplement can I take? You know, I don't have a choice. I have to take this steroid. I'm like, yep, that's fine. If you, if you don't, if you don't have a choice, the doctor says, and they're like, well, what supplement can I take? I'm like, nothing beats a steroid. Mm-hmm. None of my herbs, B vitamins, vitamin C, ashwagandha, like nothing, <laughs> nothing beats a steroid, you know? And so it's, it's we it's it's a lot of cleanup which your listeners are experiencing. And can I ask you to um with this and I'm asking cuz I actually don't know. You're you're the expert on all of this. So that's why <laughs> I, I love and appreciate having you here. If you have this massive exposure or long-term exposure or whatever exposure is just too much for your particular system, can that also kind of trickle down to impacting your sex hormone balance as well? It might, it might. And some people, I tend to see it more in the big players, like your oral prednisone, your routine, the not routine, repeat injection. Like maybe you had your right shoulder injected and then you needed your left shoulder injected or maybe both knees. Um, and so I do in that case, maybe tend to see a more a suppression a little bit of the, of the sex hormones, not always. Um, but sometimes, sometimes we'll see it trickle down there. Um, we'll see it in men, men will get, uh, they'll be on prednisone or they'll get injection for joint pain and then you know it'll affect their testosterone and it may just be transient you know for a little while or sometimes it may be more longer term depending on what else is happening in their life it's 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 not um automatic with with steroids it's not like oh take steroid i guarantee you your cortisol and your hormones are going to be low but we do see it okay and and one other question, um, and I don't know if this will, if you can even answer this, but a lot of uh, the women that I've worked with, with TSW at least, notice that their hair starts falling out. Is there any connection between your inability to produce cortisol as a result and hair loss? Actually, what it is, it's the fact that you were probably on it and it is affecting the uh, your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis right in your hair follicle. So you have... Oh cortisol production right locally in your hair follicle, believe it or not. So wow. systemic cortisol affects your hair, your hair cortisol. And then you have right, right in the hair follicle. We, we call it a, we call it the HPA access, even though we know there's no, like there's no brain. <laughs> it's just, we don't know what to call it yet. Cause we, you know, it's relatively new find. So what happens is when you have high doses of cortisol, even the steroid, it can push the hair from the growing phase into the resting phase and it can do it prematurely and it can even push it into the fallout phase. So there's, there's several phases of hair growth. 
And then, so, and you kind of work through the phases depending on, you know, the different strains of hair where you are. So in high stress situations where there's a lot of cortisol, um, or even with steroid use, what happens is it directly impacts the hair follicle itself. It can affect the stage of hair growth you are in. Um, it can push it to the next level, the next stage. And then as a result, you get, you can have hair loss when you are, when you're going through the, with the withdrawal. Wow. Yeah. And it's often hair follicle, um, hair cortisol is a reflection of the last two to three months. So if you have been on topical steroids for the last two to three months, and then you stop them and your hair is falling out now, it's from, it's the, it's what's happening. It's what's happening back then in combination with any stress going on right now, right in the follicle. So do you have any suggestions of if, let's say someone is, has this massive exposure and bam, they've, they've got this like flat road on Mm -hmm. their Dutch test. So Mm -hmm. your adrenals are just like, I don't know, man, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I feel like I'm on break, but I don't know. Um, what are some potential things that listeners should consider doing that could be helpful? I mean, obviously this is general. I want to make this this very clear. This is a general, these are general suggestions. And obviously you need to work with a practitioner because A, the Dutch test is really complicated. I'm always learning something new. It's complicated. So it's not like you're going to get these results back and it's going to tell you every little thing you should do. You really need, and especially with hormone stuff, don't mess with hormone stuff yourself. You can really throw things off. Clearly, we're, we're putting cortisol on ourselves and, and <laughs> here you go. Simplest example of how you can really mess things up. Um, but what are some basic things that people could consider if they've got that really low hill or a flat line as yeah. a result of this massive exposure? So this is a great question. And it's, I think, really easy that you can do at home. The up and down of cortisol is known as the circadian rhythm, right? It's up with the sun, down with the moon. And I'm talking to non-shift work people. So normal day work people, up with the sun, down with the moon. That's how our circadian rhythm works. In the brain, when you get light into your eyes in the morning, it's called entrainment. Light in the morning entrains your body to produce cortisol and it helps reset your rhythm for the day. Darkness at night resets it to your geophysical location mm-hmm. and kind of, to a degree like the, the timing. So we're on a 24 hour schedule, but actually, believe it or not, our brain works. It's a little bit more than 24 hours. How our brain works, our, our, these genes work. And so darkness at night is like, OK, dial, like reset, reset your clock back to 24. We only have 24 hours in the day, but the brain thinks we have like 24 hours and 11 minutes. And so it's like, no, 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 24. And then we start the clock over. Literally, they're called clock genes. So what I tell people is use the lightness and the darkness to your advantage. When you get up in the morning, open your blinds, open your curtains, go outside, get some natural light exposure, get online and buy a inexpensive full spectrum light box and turn it on first thing in the morning when you wake up. Buy the full spectrum alarm and and use that as your alarm. Don't use your phone. Use a full spectrum alarm that gradually brightens the room, um, which works better if you and your partner, if you have a partner that get up at the same time <laughs> or you're the second person to get up. Otherwise, it's annoying. Um, so that's what I tell people in the morning. Use the light. Go outside, you know, open your blinds, use a full spectrum box. Uh, and then at night, use the darkness to your advantage. So red starts to stimulate melatonin production. Think like fire. Right. People have fires at night, candlelight, um, the, the, our, our blue light blocking glasses, which are kind of a reddish orange tint and then sleep in complete darkness. So no night lights, no computer lights, no blinking lights, no alarm clock lights, no neighbor light that shines in your window. Nothing. You want it in complete darkness. Wear a sleep mask if you can't get any of that to turn off uh, because you want complete darkness to reset your circadian rhythm. It will take time. It's not automatic. Although some people tell me like within a couple of days, they notice the, hu- the huge difference, but it can take a couple of weeks to retrain the body of this. But just using your the free light or maybe like a 20 or $30 light box and the darkness at night with a $10 sleep mask can make a huge difference. Huge. Oh, can I ask you a one quick question? Yes. Some people have 
issues with sleeping through the night. So insomnia is one of the, like in extreme cases. So what would somebody who has really, has legit difficulty even sleeping do? So then, because sleep is so important then to getting our cortisol awakening response up in the morning. So not only does the do light dark help with our rhythm, but the actual act of sleeping helps our morning production of cortisol. And but if you're a flatline person and you don't sleep, it makes sense. They go hand in hand. So now we're trying to do anything you can do to get you sleeping. So are you not sleeping because it's hormonal? Are you not sleeping because maybe, believe it or not, your cortisol goes up at night? Are you not sleeping because you don't have enough progesterone, which is calming? Are you not sleeping because you have a blood sugar issue? Uh, maybe you drank alcohol before bed. You're drinking caffeine too late in the afternoon. Um, you're stressed out. So your mind is racing, you know, it can be a variety of things. And so what I'm trying to do then is use calming herbs, you know, using chamomile, using lavender, using holy basil, using magnesium before bed to just try to induce that calmness, Um, avoiding alcohol, avoiding caffeine, again, sleeping in the complete total darkness, using earplugs if you need to. For a lot of people, I'm suggesting You have to evaluate your sleep hygiene, who sleeps with you, who's waking you up, who's snoring, who's interrupting you in the middle of the night. And I know it's really tough. And sometimes you kind of have to prior. I don't have a supplement for that. Right. So I'm like, you have to kind of prioritize your sleep if you're in this really bad cortisol situation over anything else. So I've had patients sleep in the guest room for a month just to get it back you know, just to retrain their body, get it back and then move back in sort of to their room with their partner. And I guess the other piece to this is if you are waking up in the middle of the night and you're just kind of done, right, in the process of trying to Mm -hmm. retrain, that means you're not turning the iPad on. You're not staring at your phone. You've got to keep. So would the light option be like literally candlelight? (laughs) (laughs) If you are up, I mean, I'm just trying to think like practically because I'm thinking of the person that's like, but worst case scenario, yeah. what do blue, I do? Blue light blocking glasses. Blue light. Try okay. the blue light blocking glasses. I have a, it's funny. I have a lecture that I'm giving here soon. And one of my slides says, if you go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, don't turn on the light, especially mm. if you have sleep issues, because when you flip on the light and your 45 or 60 watt yep. light bulb comes on or your vanity comes on, you know, and now what you've done is you've taken your darkness away and you're, you turn on the light and the brain goes, Oh, all right, let's, let's entrain this. And even though you can fall back asleep, sometimes in some sensitive people, it's, it completely screws their circadian rhythm up. And then in the morning they're tired or groggy, or they just don't feel like, you know, they have a lot of oomph when they get up to the bathroom. Not everybody. I mean, obviously some people wake up, turn the light on, have no issues, Mm -hmm. but, um, you know, I definitely get the feedback from people who say, when I go to the bathroom in the night, turn the light, then it's it's a real yeah. problem. It's real shocking yeah. to my system, and then I struggle to go fall back asleep. Yeah, and um, so I assume you kind of agree with me. Like this is when someone is in this place where they've got this adrenal insufficiency as a result. You really do need help, right? It, would that be yeah. your advice? Yeah, it's not absolutely. a DIY. No, is- and especially because um, I know I said like nothing can beat a steroid, but at this point, for a lot of people, they're weaning off or they've, they've come off and they're experiencing the withdrawal. And there are various levels and degrees of strength when it comes to herbs or glandulars or brain support to really help get things back online, right? To really help improve communication, talking you through these light, dark circadian rhythm support. There are other things that are, that can be really helpful. And And, and we're just talking about cortisol right now, you know, like what happens if you're also on other medication that's affecting your cortisol and your sleep and your hormones. And we just haven't even touched on it. Like what happens if you have hypothyroidism and it's not being, it's not well controlled, like that will affect your cortisol. What help, what happens if you're weaning off steroids and oh, by the way, there's a pandemic happening. So you're, you're feeling a little shot and burnt out and anxious and, you know, unsure of the future, like that's going to affect your whole axis as well. And so it's, extremely multifactorial. We are focused on a really important part, but that's how that's seeing a practitioner will then take everything into account of like, oh, well, at the same time, you're also, you know, like your goal is to get pregnant, you know, like, wow, that's, that's totally different. You know? Yep. It's than somebody who's not. <laughs> exactly. And well, that's why the one thing is nice is number one, people can order the Dutch test themselves directly mm-hmm. from your website, 
which is awesome. So you don't need your doctor to write for this. Um, and actually, I have a great coupon code for you guys. Um, you were saying what was the best one? The Dutch Plus is the best one for people in I, this particular the boat. Dutch Plus in this boat is Dutch Plus. I the Dutch Complete is a little g- more general. It is a little cheaper. Um, but for people who are really struggling, the Dutch Plus is who I'm going. What is what I'm going to recommend? You'll get okay. the most bang for your buck. Okay. And so with that, if you guys decide you want to order either the complete or the plus, which in this case, we're saying that's probably your better option, you can get $50 off by using the the code HEALTHYSKIN50. And that, thank you so much, Dr. Jones, for yeah. even giving us that because it's a really big help for people to be able to afford that. And um, your team as well, because I've, I've called in many times to ask questions, your team is really helpful at um, Dutch to be able to help answer uh, different things about what can work, what can't work. They're just super, super helpful. But I do think that if you are wondering how your adrenals are doing, given where you are, and I, I think too, the other thing to consider is that skin rashes in general are incredibly stressful. It puts a body under a tremendous load of stress and trauma, let's be honest. There's a lot mm-hmm. of trauma that goes along with it. And then combine that with topical steroid use um, and possible inhalers, et cetera, you might not be in this like flat line place, but you could have some level of dysfunction. And so that's where this could be really helpful and you better understanding that response and whatnot. So I, I'm so appreciative that you joined us for this. This was such an exciting conversation. Um, and where can everybody, is it dutchtest.com where everybody Dutch, can go? Yep. Dutchtest.com is the easiest. Everything on there all our education, all our webinars, all our podcasts are all free, uh, including this one when it goes live. And so, um, yes, everything is on DutchTest.com. Perfect. And by the way, everyone, Dr. Jones has an amazing Instagram. So if you're over <laughs> there, you can find her at Jones. We'll link to all of this stuff in the show notes for you. And um, I hope that this will be helpful wherever you are on your journey. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Jones. Thank you. I really appreciate it. It's a great conversation. I truly hope that this episode is as exciting and eye-opening to you as I found it to be. In fact, Dr. Jones and I were very excited to sit down and have this conversation. If you have any questions or comments after this episode, please head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 153 in order to leave your questions and comments there. And you're also going to find all of the resources, the links to the study we discussed, and we've got a $50 coupon code if you're interested in grabbing one of those Dutch Complete or Dutch Plus tests for yourself over in those show notes. So head on over skinterrupt.com forward slash 153. If you know someone who's really struggling right now, going through topical steroid withdrawal, or has serious concern that the amount of steroid exposure that they've had in their life may be highly problematic, they have a lot of these concerning symptoms that make them wonder if maybe there's been this disconnect, unfortunately, between what is going on in the brain and that feedback loop connecting it to the adrenal glands. This would be a great episode to share with them because the symptoms can be really difficult to go through. Very challenging for many of you who've listened to the various episodes about topical steroid withdrawal, you know that this is a really serious concern. And this is not just an eczema issue. This is an issue that impacts many of us because people who have psoriasis have used steroid creams. Other conditions are prescribed steroid creams, and it's not to scare you, but we also need to be our own advocates, and it's important to remember that while medication can be helpful, too much of it is not always a good thing, and our systems are unique. So make sure to take this information in and then discuss it with your practitioners and your doctors if you do have a serious concern. And before you head out for your day, please, please, please take a moment, rate and review The Healthy Skin Show. Share what you love, what you've learned, what insights you've gained from tuning in on whatever podcast platform that you are listening from. It would mean a lot to me. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.